Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. In this video, I will cover a question a viewer suggested. 3 to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 9. Solve for all real values of x that satisfy this equation. Now, I admit, when I received this problem, I hadn't the slightest clue how to approach the question. So I did extensive research. It turns out this is a very popular problem on social media. Some people have said that it's a math Olympiad question. Others have said that 99% of students have failed and others have even claimed it's a Harvard University entrance exam. While there are videos and posts that have covered this problem that have gotten millions of views, they have unfortunately left me disappointed. These particular videos, for example, have only presented one solution. When I looked at this question numerically, I found out there were two real solutions. So in this video, I want to present a more complete answer. I will first show you the nice trick so that you could get to one real solution, and then I will go into some deeper mathematics to show you a way that you can have an exact form of the other solution, although eventually you will have to numerically estimate the answer. So let's get started. We have 3 to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 9. Raise both sides of the equation to the power of 1 divided by the quantity 9x. We can now use exponent rules. a to the power of m raised to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. The rule, of course, applies for suitable base a and suitable exponents m and n. In this case, we're dealing with positive real numbers, so the exponent rule will apply. So on the left-hand side, let's take m to be equal to x and n to be equal to 1 divided by 9x. So we will multiply these together. Now we do the same thing on the right-hand side. m is equal to 9 and n is equal to 1 divided by 9x, so we will multiply these exponents. So let's simplify the exponents. On the left-hand side, we have x in the numerator and x in the denominator, so they will cancel out. So the resulting exponent will be 1 divided by 9. And on the right-hand side, the 9 in the numerator will cancel with the 9 in the denominator, so we have 1 divided by x. So how do we solve this equation? 3 to the power of 1 over 9 is equal to x to the power of 1 over x. Let us try to convert the left-hand side into something of the form x to the power of 1 over x. So we will do another trick. We will rewrite 1 over 9 as an equivalent fraction, 3 over 27. So how does this help us? We will now use the exponent rule in reverse. Let's say we have a to the power of m times n. This will be equal to a to the power of m raised to the power of n. Let's take m to be equal to 3 and n to be equal to 1 over 27. So we can rewrite the left-hand side as the following form. We will take 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of 1 over 27. Now 27 is equal to 3 to the power of 3, so we can substitute that in. So let's examine the equation. We have 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of 3, and this needs to be equal to x to the power of 1 over x. So if all we do is match this x to 3 to the power of 3, we will then have 1 over 3 to the power of 3 exactly equal to 1 over x. So we have figured out one solution. If we take x to be equal to 3 to the power of 3, which equals 27, then of course x to the power of 1 over x will be equal to 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of 3. This is equal to 27 raised to the power of 1 over 27, and that's approximately equal to 1.30. So we have found a solution to this equation. But the interesting thing is this is not the only solution. Another answer is that x can approximately be equal to 1.151. If you take x to the power of 1 over x, this will approximately be equal to 1.30, which is equal to 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of 3, or 27 raised to the power of 1 over 27. So we have another solution. To understand why, let us look at the graph 
of x to the power of 1 over x. Now, let's plot the line y is equal to 27 raised to the power of 1 over 27. This line intersects the graph of x to the power of 1 over x in two different places. One place will be when x is equal to 27, that's one solution, and the other is when x is approximately equal to 1.151. So we can conclude the original equation 3 to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 9 has two real solutions. Now using exponent rules and various tricks, we were able to figure out the integer solution x is equal to 27. But would there be a way that we could figure out the other solution from first principles. From a practical perspective, a numerical solver or a graphical solution will be the best you can do because you're going to get an approximate solution. But you might be wondering, is there a way to write this solution in an exact form? The answer is no, using the elementary functions that you learned in school. But from a mathematical perspective, there is a way that we can express the answer in an exact form, and that is useful from a theoretical purpose, and it could be useful from a practical perspective if you need to input this answer into another result, and so you're not carrying over rounding the answer. But in order to get an exact answer, we need to introduce another function called the Lambert W function. And I will motivate why we need another function. So let's start out by solving a linear equation, x plus 2 is equal to 5. How can we solve for x? We subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, and this gives us the answer that x is equal to 3. The addition is undone by the subtraction so that we could solve the equation. If we had 2x is equal to 5, we could divide both sides of the equation by 2 so that we get x is equal to 2.5. Multiplication is undone by division. Now what if we add e to the power of x is equal to 5? We could take logarithms on both sides, and then we could use logarithm rules, and we can isolate that x is equal to the natural log of 5. Exponentiation is undone by the logarithm. But what if we had the equation x times e to the power of x is equal to 5? How would we isolate x? From a theoretical perspective, we could create another function, and we'll call this the Lambert W function, and this will undo this product of x with e to the power of x. All that would remain is to solve what w of 5 is equal to. So if w were to undo this side of the equation, and we would just be left with x, we would just have x is equal to w of 5, and we would only need to evaluate what w of 5 is to solve the original equation. So we have the product of x with an exponentiation, and we could create a new function, the Lambert W function, which is also known as the product logarithm. Now, to be a little bit more careful, for real values, we're going to actually need two different functions. One branch will be w0 of x, and the other branch will be w minus 1 of x. To explain why we need two different functions for this inverse, let me talk about another equation you'll be more familiar with. Let's say you have x squared is equal to 4. What values of x would satisfy this equation? Why, of course, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4, which will give us two values of plus or minus 2. So if we have an equation where we are squaring x, we will end up with two different solutions. We can think about this graphically. If we had the graph of y is equal to x squared, we will have a parabola. For every non-negative y value, there are two x values. So when we want to reverse this process or invert this function, we will reflect the graph of this about the line y is equal to x. So we have this parabola. But now, this parabola will not represent the graph of a normal function. Every non-negative x value has two y values. And a function needs to assign every single x value to just one y value. So how can mathematicians fix this? Well, if you have an overgrown tree with too many branches, you can prune it down so that it looks a lot nicer. 
So in this case, we have two branches of this parabola. So let's just separate the branches by first pruning the bottom branch. We now have a branch that only consists of non-negative y values. And we will dub this branch as the principal square root. Let's write it as f1 of x, which is equal to the principal square root of x. So f1 of 4 will give us the square root of 4, which is just one value, which is 2. But we know that in the original equation, x squared is equal to 4. We also need to account for the negative value. So we could take this as another branch, and we could call this the negative square root branch, where f2 of x is equal to negative the square root of x. So then we would have f2 of 4 is equal to minus the square root of 4, which is equal to minus 2. So let's apply this concept to the Lambert W function. So here we have the graph of x times e to the power of x. Now, if we want to undo this operation, it would be equivalent to reflecting the graph of this function about the line y is equal to x, and we will end up with this graph. But now, looking when x is less than 0, we could see that we will have a problem. We are going to have certain values of x that correspond to two values of y. So just like in the parabola, we're going to separate this Lambert W function into two different branches. So one branch will be above y is equal to negative 1. This will be known as the principal branch. This will be w0 of x. We can then take the other branch where y is less than negative 1. And because the separation happens at y is equal to negative 1, we will name this branch as w minus 1 of x. So we have conceptually developed the Lambert w function graphically as two different functions, the principal branch and the minus 1 branch. But you might be wondering, is there a way that you could just input this in a graph and see the graph of this function for yourself. No. From a practical perspective, you have to estimate these graphs. Someone has put in this very complicated setup in Desmos, and you can go and check it out. I've provided a link in the video description. You're going to see there is some trouble of the minus 1 branch right around minus 1. But you don't have to worry about any of this because the Lambert W function is built into Wolfram Alpha. So if you wanted to evaluate the principal branch, w0 of x, all you need to do is use the syntax product log parentheses 0 comma x close parentheses. If you wanted the minus 1 branch, just use the syntax product log parentheses minus 1 comma x close parentheses. So we have a practical way of evaluating the principal and the minus 1 branch. So all that remains is to solve the original equation and find all real solutions. So we start out with 3 to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 9. We want to transform it where we have u times e to the power of u is equal to something. So we can use the Lambert W function to undo the product times the exponentiation. So let's transform this equation. We will first use a change of base on 3 to the power of x. So 3 is equal to e to the power of the natural log of 3. We will substitute that in. And we will now use exponent rules. So we multiply these exponents. So the left-hand side of the equation is e to the power of x times the natural log of 3. Let us now divide both sides of the equation by the left-hand side of the equation. Now let us rewrite the fraction on the right-hand side as a product by using a negative exponent. Let's continue analyzing from this very last equation. Now we have x to the power of 9, which we can undo by raising both sides to the power of 1 over 9. 1 to the power of 1 over 9 will have 9 different values in complex numbers. But we're only dealing with real numbers here, so we will just have the 1 value of 1. We can then use exponent rules to simplify the right-hand side of the equation. So we're getting very close. All we need to do now is multiply both sides of the equation by minus the natural log of 3 all over 9. And now, if you examine this equation, we have exactly what we want. 
we have u times e to the power of u is equal to something. So if we take u to be equal to minus x times the natural log of 3 all over 9, the right-hand side of the equation will become u times e to the power of u. We can now apply the Lambert W function to both sides of the equation. This will exactly undo the right-hand side of the equation. It will be equal to u, and we can substitute in for u. So how can we solve this equation for x? All we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by minus 9 divided by the natural log of 3. So we have that x is equal to minus 9 divided by the natural log of 3 times the Lambert W function of minus the natural log of 3 over 9. So all that remains is to evaluate the Lambert function at this value. So we will have two branches. We will have the minus 1 branch and we will have the principal branch. Now at this point, we have exact forms of our solution, and we could just input them into Wolfram Alpha, and we would get numerical answers. But before I do that, it will be a fun exercise to calculate W of minus ln3 divided by 9. This will be the value of x that solves the equation x times e to the power of x is equal to minus the natural log of 3 over 9. So how do we do that? Well, let's first rewrite this fraction with a negative exponent. Minus 3 to the power of minus 2 times the natural log of 3. Let us pull one more factor of 3. So we have minus 3 to the power of minus 3 times 3 times the natural log of 3. We can then change the base so that we have minus e to the power of minus 3 times the natural log of 3 times 3 ln of 3. Now this is exactly the form we want. Let me just bring the constant coefficient to the front of the equation. So we have x times e to the power of x is equal to minus 3 ln of 3 times e to the power of minus 3 ln of 3. So trivially, x is equal to minus 3 ln of 3 will solve this equation. Now this value of x is less than minus 1, so this corresponds to the minus 1 branch. So we will substitute this in to the equation that corresponds to the minus 1 branch. So this is equal to minus 9 over the natural log of 3 times minus 3 ln of 3. Now ln of 3 will cancel out, and then minus 9 times minus 3 is exactly equal to 27. So we have the integer solution that x is equal to 27. Now we can exactly verify this in Wolfram Alpha. If we input this in, we will see that we would get a numerical answer of 27. But it was kind of fun to derive this one calculation. We now need to calculate the other branch. The only way to do that is numerically, and we input this into Wolfram Alpha, and we will get the decimal approximation 1.151. And this is the exact way to write the answer, but we also have a practical numerical estimate. So in summary, 3 to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 9. If we need to solve this for real values of x, we will have two solutions. One is 27, and the other is minus 9 over ln of 3 times the principal branch of the Lambert function of minus ln of 3 over 9, and this is approximately equal to 1.151. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.